Well, hello! Welcome to the wonderful virtual world of Free City. Ironically enough, I had planned for this video slot to be occupied with Connected the movie, because, you know, that was the last film of 2020 to not be delayed any further, and it hasn't been delayed, it's just... been unannounced for a release date. For a while, I guess. Thankfully, Ryan Reynolds has blessed us with a fortunately timed trailer to fill the gap with the second trailer of Free Guys. So yes, maybe I am technically grasping at straws for content, but the alternative was making up something about how this global flip-up is said to be leading to a boom in R-rated animated films in the future. Hmm, I have it all planned out and written already, so if any other movies feel like shifting wildly on their schedules, if they haven't already, then I'll keep that prompt in mind. For now, let's talk Free Guy, and I'm certainly familiar with the film, as a few months back I made a video analysing practically every frame of the first trailer for the film, and it's actually my most popular film for all of 2020 so far, so thanks on that, just teetering on that 1 million view count. Now I don't plan to be repeating all too much from that video, so if you want to hear absolutely everything there is to know about this film, then I absolutely implore you go check that out first. It'll set out the foundation work for what's going on in this film, and a few theories and speculations along the way. Alright, now then, let's get into things. This new trailer was introduced in a very Ryan Reynolds way, cause first it's on his own YouTube channel of course, but also it was first presented to us retroactively through another video on his channel announcing it existing tomorrow. Just your marketing stuff, featuring a video call with some of the top actors offering alternative release dates cause that is the trend these days isn't it? Though this new trailer says it's still aiming for the December 11th slot apparently, so fingers crossed that all goes to plan. Seriously, it's like the only new movie review I have going for me this year now. So from what we've seen of the first trailer, we already have a pretty solid lineup of events which this film only helps to put together more. The second trailer opens up with Guy waking up from his bed presumably for the first time. Something to note though is that we have seen a similar sequence before from the first trailer but it is a little bit different. And while this could be down to reshoots, alternative takes and angles, this repeat is actually pretty simplistically explained both in story and in the game world's mechanics. Guy and the entire world of Free City is on an endless loop, repeating the same day again and again to be disrupted and played around with by the players of the game. And most notably from later on in this same trailer, it acts as a kind of respawn point for Guy. Or at least represents something like that is going on. Whether he is directly teleported back to his bed like a Minecraft character, or if he's shut off until the game reloads is still kind of up in the air though. Even still, this version in the second trailer feels like the ultimate first time waking up for Guy. Whilst the first trailer's version gives off a vibe more of knowingly doing the same thing. It's not really a big deal which way round these two scenes take place. Though this time we see him say hello to his pet goldfish Goldie, who we see is actually quite a prominent asset at least to Guy, as both official posters show Guy lugging Goldie around with him. Though I've checked through the cast list I can find and no one's credited to Goldie, so presumably they're not gonna talk. Goldie is the item Guy confides in to tell his innermost thoughts, later saying today's gonna be different Goldie. Clearly after awakening and questioning their repetitive cycle. Though I looked around and none of the shots in the trailers so far actively show Guy carrying Goldie with him, so it might just be a marketing thing. Next shot we see is Guy wandering through the virtual streets of his city. We've seen this format of a shot before, showing off all sorts of quirky holographic assets like the bank, armory and garage, and this time the video gamey location tropes continue with the gym, burger place, cafe, courthouse, hotel and what I think is supposed to say hospital too. Kinda hard to tell on that angle. Now chronologically, this is to take place after Guy has taken the gaming goggles, or whatever they're called, from the bank robber seen in the last trailer. Running outside to first see all the new notifications, I guess you could call them, and now exploring further to see what there is. And being more slowed down this time, there's all sorts of cheeky info in there. After all, the gym will increase stats, and presumably cost some coins. A way to physically level up your character beyond the experience of just playing the game. In this case, focusing on power and endurance. The burger barn looks to have some luncheon specials on the menu, and what looks to be a chef mission too, as in like an actual side mission option for players? Huh, considering this is something that won't actually be making an appearance in the main story of the film, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't seen any footage of Ryan Reynolds in a chef hat at least, I'm actually quite impressed two minutes in to find all these fleshed out elements and tropes. It's like they just let the VFX guy just nerd out. Anyway, more subtly in the bottom left corner is a spinning coat hanger, presumably going for the aesthetic clothes changing options in shops and a level 4 car? As in you need to be level 4 to access or buy? Interesting. The cafe lets you restore energy with a menu of three items I can't read, and less subtly there is the subtle product placement of which gets you plus mojo and I assume negative integrity. 
Matt, what an extensive system of traits. Reminds me of the leather jackets in Cyberpunk 2077, giving you, like, street credit and respect or something if you wear them. But in reverse here. Also, there's a blimp up top, I guess never seen before by the NPCs? Maybe it's even the new Fortnite battle bus, leading to the drop-ins from the top of the map that we saw last time. Just down here right now. Yeah, that's not a solid theory. Following that, we now have a couple of clips shown already in the previous trailer, though only this time did I actually notice these two women wearing an interesting skin. Are they actually NPCs from some corporate gang or players in disguise? They seem to be turning on each other too. Also, chronologically, this takes place earlier as Guy no longer has his all-seeing glasses to find the holographic details. A new part of Guy's routine we actually get to see is going to the CAF each morning, with an NPC that's either extra NPC-y or is reacting to the armored tank that just rolled up. I honestly didn't spot it to like the third time through. Oops. Nothing else of crazy note comes up in this scene. But we know it's the routine as all sorts of scenes from the last trailer show Guy with that same coffee cup. In fact, actually, maybe this is where we'll first see our security NPC friend Buddy, or maybe Guy just buys two every day. And hey, if you haven't already, subscribe! Only you can help balance out my skewed unsub ratio count. And as it's October, I'd best hint at our return to streaming content at the end of the month. Twitch.tv slash dazvideos. And here's some schedules. It may change, but whatever the case, I'm making like a million contents in these last few months. I mean, what else is there to do this year? <laughs> Following that is meeting Molotov Girl. According to this, Guy just sees her on the street one day and is entranced by her. In reality, there's a few conflicting pieces going on here. For a start, he's shown to be interrupted by Buddy the Buddy, though in reality, that's a separate event, I'm pretty sure, with Guy actually passing her on the street. Though I guess he could be getting distracted on two separate days as part of the routine now. Hmm. And according to Guy's own words later, we ran into each other the other day. Which seems to suggest they actually spoke, or they literally ran into each other on the streets, with Guy knocking her down in his trance. I mean, I guess that's plausible. She, meanwhile, was just looking at the map, and is now folding it away into her back pocket. Behind her is a building that bans guns, not too dissimilarly to the loans building by Guy and Buddy, and these safe places are something we've seen before in universe. It's a non-PVP kind of area, you know? Some guy's getting mugged or confronted by a player on the left, of course, and this granny-looking character is suspiciously turning to watch Molotov. It's probably nothing, right? Moving on, Guy then goes to stalk Molotov Girl to the edge of the city, which we can see is distinctively barren in this direction, and this road is actually the same one we saw earlier, so here's a better view of the calf. And there's a random train in the way killing Guy and respawning him back to his bed, as we saw earlier, and his reaction tells me that this is an expected outcome. Perhaps this is even a running theme for a few lives. Moving on, we next see Guy re-evaluating his life with Buddy on a beach, though this conversation we've actually heard before in the last trailer too. It's all about whether there's anything more to life than the routine. Funnily enough, both trailer cuts try to sync the conversation into different scenes they're showing, but the new one is more convincing. Buddy, as a non-compromised NPC of the game, has had no questioning thoughts. It's just Guy because he's got some kind of glitch somewhere in his code. Following that, there's some more clips that we've seen before, though maybe now we can guess that Guy was trying to get Molotov's attention, pointing out something before being hit by that car. And upon finally determining that today's gonna be different, he presumably hijacks that bank robbery from the last trailer, gains gamer vision, and approaches Molotov Girl during her night mission. Presumably for the first proper time. How did you find me? I waited outside by the murder train. The murder train, of course, being the murder train. What I'm guessing this all means is that Molotov Girl walked to the edge, disconnected and bubbled away into the sky, as is the mechanic of the game for all players, and Guy literally hung around where she despawned until she eventually arrived. Literally doing the long con waiting system in the Bethesda games. In fact, a couple shots later, we do see a kind of teleporting effect that could either be signing in and spawning into a place, or because it's by the subway, then maybe this is part of a fast travel system which we did speculate on in our last trailer analysis. But before that shot, we have an awfully telling finale looking sequence. So I'll say this right now, this is a modern day film trailer, alright? It kind of spoils a lot. I didn't notice this when watching in real time, which I guess is kind of supposed to be the point, but... Here's a flight sequence atop the heights of Free City, above the hotel, through the welcome banner, and against a gun-toting helicopter. You could assume this is the baddie mobile trying to shoot down a now flying Molotov girl. Guess that's a GTA hack or item or mechanic they're utilizing for the ending. Can't wait to see how Guy manipulates it. And talking about baddies, presumably this would be Antoine, right? He's the villainous douchey boss and he'd want to shoot down his opposition, right? 
though we've yet to officially see him in game, so maybe this is a goon type guy. We do see in the last trailer a couple of ominous gunly figures, one of whom I'm still questioning whether they're secretly Joe Keery or not, or it could literally be more literal grunts as we also saw that a whole bunch last time too. Speaking of what we saw last time, here's some more filler for the revelation moment that Guy had last trailer. Now taking a few more steps forward past a couple blurring usernames I cannot for the life of me read, a couple bubbles of music notes and I think wrenches have popped up which we saw the building of last time but with no holograms, being some kind of novelty shop? It's a place to buy things in game I guess. The HUD is also mostly the same though some stats have changed. He has way less XP this time though gained some between shots, now there are infinite harmless slaps, he has more power and stamina, is that different from endurance at the gym? And a few other things as well. One thing that stays constant though is that he still has exactly $187.03. And underneath all this, Monotov Girl is telling Guy that everything is a video game and that it's not real, though he doesn't really seem to be paying attention, choosing the romantic option instead. Which, very Ryan Reynolds humour as usual, but does actually lead into a scene we know all about already. Here is Molotov Girl in real life as Millie. A whole lot more shy than her dynamic avatar. And coming in now is Keys, another main character who will proceed to discuss with Millie how impossible it is for Guy to even exist, let alone break the game and find the kiss button. This scene was shown off as a preview back at the New York Comic Con 2019 where a description of this exact scene was said to take place. Guy is the first real artificial intelligence and he's also four. Mixed in the middle of that for the trailer at least is also this face scanning moment I guess where we first actually see Ryan Reynolds recreated as an actual 3D CGI model, which is a great effect to show how he looks in the real world. Anyway, this player identification scan apparently can bring up his occupation as a bank teller, his number B07, whatever that means, as well as all sorts of other stats soon. And in Millie's room we see more of Free City as a main menu on the TV screen and a physical map that you can hang on the wall, which let me just quickly detour. Uh, this shot doesn't appear in the new trailer, it's your classic battle bus view, right? Giving us that great city perspective in which last time I said, this aerial view of the city over a couple of rivers with way too many bridges, which is, yeah. Turns out this is just Pittsburgh. Like, this is actually real. <laughs> My bad, I, I didn't realise real life was so bridge happy. Though while I'm in the comments, here's a few other things people pointed out that I figured would be fun to share, because there are some great ideas I got last time. <clears throat> what if Molotov Girl ends up being controlled by a guy in real life because she's just an avatar? Wouldn't that just be a fantastic twist to manipulate guy? There's also the idea that he might run into himself as NPC models do repeat, though the scan here unfortunately suggests otherwise. Laserbeam is apparently not a streamer. Uh, oops, sorry my dude, uh, I, I, I just didn't know. I think I did a quick Google and that was the first thing that popped up. And a lot of people didn't know this film existed. I assume things are a tad better now, but even still, it's just Ryan Reynolds' YouTube channel. Films lately, even beyond 2020, have really been dropping it on the marketing. I'll happily be the advertisement though, <laughs> along with the YouTubers and streamers that are retweeting the trailer. That's like all the marketing they're doing so far. Moving on comes a shot of Guy walking through the chaotic streets as usual, though we've technically seen this before, as that building on fire in the background lines up perfectly with last trailer's shot of a helicopter crashing into the side of it, with bail bonds and money available everywhere, and a player. Here's Guy again at the beach, another barren edge to the city, revealing the edge of the world. Perhaps Molotov Girl even walked through one of these at the other edge we saw and Guy was just waiting for her to come out on the other end, like it's a hub world that only players can access. It's an alternative to that spawning in theory anyway. Again talking to Buddy now indoors, Guy's questioning if everything's not real then nothing matters, and Buddy believes that this is real, still that functioning AI is planned. Entering that wooden doorway again, we now see it leads to a hub world bar type place. And as we saw last time, it does seem to be fairly summonable. We've got leaderboards with Tuxedo Baby at the top, Annie something second, Young Nightwalker third, Kills for Pills fourth, Sweet Auntie Helen fifth, and I really can't read that bottom one. And most of these are kind of a guess anyway. There's animated accolades like accuracy I imagine. Up top there are highlights showing a monster truck getting 750 points for crushing a sports car. And generally this is a place to just wind down and spectate others. Or maybe this is even where players spawn to when they die. I mean they'd need to go somewhere wouldn't they? And there's multiple layers with multiple leaderboards saying Thrill Kill 287 on top. Is that the name of the place or something? And hey that's the player guy overthrew at the bank. I wonder if that will go anywhere. 
Following that, Guy tells Millie that this fake world is all he has, though the actual dialogue sounds like two different sentences smashed together, doesn't it? Millie, I know this world is just a game. The idea is still there, though. Here's another brief shot of the cafe with friendly policemen to wave to every morning. The place is number 56, and a guy in the background looks to be running and repeatedly hitting an invisible wall. Is it supposed to be, like, lag? Or is the player jolting the controls forwards and backwards or something? Is there a moving invisible wall the player is constantly trying to bash against? It's kind of unclear. And a happy shot with Buddy in the middle of the road. And here's another take of the morning robbery routine. Taking the Groundhog Day approach of living the best day now by having the player fall through the window and Guy protecting the place. Disarming the dude and handing the owner a bag of money. Clearly leaving a positive mark on the world. Everyone will remember that. And here he is now with a collection of guns, a minigun, RBGs, the lot. And also with more new pairs of glasses. Is this guy literally like collecting them somewhere? Whatever the case, his actions are clearly being heard as he is a massive computer room full of people watching Guy traveling down a road, all keeping eyes on him. And this nude of him taking over players and doing the good thing is making official news. Anywhere around the world, people are watching. And at the Shibuya Crossing, you can most clearly see Guy's CGI design. It looks a little too smooth in places, you know? Though more notably, look what's going on. The people are watching and recording as Guy has his Vanellope moment. Well, there's your spoiler pretty much. Here's Keys working on the game as is his job, seeing on his monitor Guy returning money to the jewelry shop owner. And his post-it notes say add two one-shot kills in bakery, which is a interesting note I don't really understand, and a just pre-firing tracker. A couple of players are dead on the side as is needed for this good deed, and unfortunately I really can't read the files on his desktop, though I bet they hint at something evil. Another player gets knocked out right by the store, packages and things, and Guy is having a whale of a time after having just discovered this world. The news even makes it to Jeopardy, and Antoine the boss ain't too happy, saying this loser is ruining the game, which to be fair, he kind of is. Also, here's the mystery of Antoine's assistant solved. Here he is in the flesh, and though the IMDB cast naming is still a little bit weird, spelling him wrong, and are they really both called Jonathan? The face all matches up. And he seems a little distant, doesn't he? Meanwhile, Guy is doing more of the same. A player dies, there's a thankful employee, and he's now high-fiving cops. The same ones from before, maybe? And apparently, it's right near the too many bridges on the map. And now we get the Frozen scene again. I wonder if this is the first sign of the shutdown. Kind of makes the whole thing a lot more ominous. Antoine next says, I don't care if he's Arnold freaking Schwarzenvader, terminate him. Clearly a little oblivious to real nerdy references, as all executives are, and he's telling it to Keys. Hmm. And here's more of that fight scene. Now with a nut punch, a hatchet against a boxer that doesn't actually draw blood, just HP I guess, and an airbag as a finishing move, as a ninja moves in the background. And back to more plot, Molotov tells Guy the game is gonna shut down, though he's oblivious as usual. There's generic wanted posters we've seen before, and a new hairstyle place. And going full spoiler mode now, Here's the shutdown of the game. Clearly against everyone in the world's wishes after a cult following bruise on Guy, and hey, underneath is the sky, because that would literally be the skybox behind all of the assets in game. Nice. I think even that officer's leg is deleting too, or maybe it's just a glitch on the actual grid. And this still isn't Pittsburgh, right? I mean, I may not have been to the States much, but I'm pretty sure landlocked Pittsburgh doesn't have a beach, right? Is it like a nearby Cleveland or just another random city they plucked? Whatever the case, what's that in the ocean? The last bridge of hope against all of this. Here's a dramatic turn at the beach as the narration says they want to save the city, and that RPG alleyway scene again with a kiss I don't understand the placement of. And I mean, how did Midi even find that button? And again, at that fight scene, here's a motorcycle entrance, and following more interestingly, a public speech to the NPCs of the world, declaring to change this world by fighting together. Look, there's Buddy and the cafe lady. What an interesting revolution between players and NPCs. And Guy's certainly gonna have the collection of glasses by now. And of course, a racing car sequence as well. At least at some point involving the shutdown of the game. Though, actually, it looks more like destructive elements being manipulated to close shut. So maybe it's meddling instead? Or both? I mean, there's the skybox again. Also, is that car the one we saw in the garage? And that one too? I don't know, I'm colorblind. And as the two joke about driving experience, Guy chucks away his name tag, totally going undercover, though he's still recognized by fans. So to wrap everything up together, we've got around 75 shots. The general story is Guy lives a routine life as an NPC, something clicks that awakens him, he questions reality, takes matters into his own hands, discovers Molotov and his virtualness, goes to be the good guy, makes a mark on the world, causes an opposition against him, and tries to start an uprising himself. And yada yada yada, the game is shut down, the world is his fan club, and who knows where things go from there. 
I guess with enlightenment, the sky's the limit. An interesting enough plot with a million little gaming references in the background. It's to the point that I'm tempted once this film comes out in an actual HD quality, I want to just scan everything frame by frame for all the game mechanic details. This film looks great. I love that Ryan Reynolds humour, and if it keeps its 2020 date, then it could possibly be one of the best films this year considering the sinkhole of content in the middle of it. The marketing has been very weird though. A lot of people don't really know it exists and things are only really moving now. As both a fan of Reynolds and the internet stars that are said to be making an appearance. Well, clearly I don't know all of the facts. For now, I'd best end it off here. I've rambled long enough. Most of my speculations in the first trailer anyway. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> it's probably not right to put in my little green screen sections on a trailer analysis, right? Either way, this video was way too long for it anyway, so I just opted against it.